Hello, today I'm going to speak and uh, chat with uh, Christiana Carboni. Yeah. You it properly? Yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> The uh, Pelvic News Channel is all about science, but also about connecting colleagues. And Christiana is from Brazil, and well, I don't know a lot about Brazil. I've been to Iguazu. Oh, nice. I, it's a lot of water, yes. but I don't know anything about the education in Brazil. So that's why I invited Christiana to, to learn more about pelvic tissue therapy in Brazil, but also about her PhD project, of course. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Cristiane Carboni, so I'm from Porto Alegre, Brazil, that is all the way to the south of Brazil, so we have winter there, and it's very cold. <laughs> so I'm a pelvic floor physiotherapist, and I did my master's degree in Barcelona in 2009, because in Brazil there was no um, no great pelvic floor post-graduation there. We were just starting at that time. So most of us had to go out of Brazil to learn more about pelvic floor and then come back to the country. So now we do have uh, master degrees and post-graduation in pelvic floor rehabilitation there, but it's pretty a new area over there. So we are learning to do research and projects and uh, clinical practice in the pelvic floor area. So we can consider that this is a, a very new area uh, in Brazil of the, for the pelvic floor. So how did you get interested in the pelvic floor? <laughs> That's a nice question. So in the graduation of physiotherapy, we have like just very small things about pelvic floor and then I get interested by what I saw that was very little. So I went all the way to the north, north of Brazil that was a pelvic floor physiotherapist there that she had more experience and I did a course with her. And then I get surprised and then I thought, well, that, that's what I want to do for life. So I look after a master's degree and I found this one in the University of Barcelona. So that was my first experience really deep with pelvic floor area. And how did the course take in Barcelona? It was two years. Yeah. So when I came back, because um, what I learned was uh, very good, it was more manual therapy. And when I get back to Brazil, there we use a lot of electrostimulation, biofeedback. So um, I had to, to do some courses and specialize more in electrostimulation and, and biofeedback as well to do my clinical practice inside Brazil. So you think uh, the difference so is you do a lot of uh, work with electrostimulation and probably the biofeedback. Um, do you really need that? Yeah. And is the outcome different than without the electrostimulation? <laughs> that, that's a good question too. Actually, uh, because my background was without any of these devices, so no, that, that's what I say to my students now as well, that they, they do not need it. But while we feel in clinical practice, it's for some special patients, if you raise adherence, especially with biofeedback. Now we have uh, some softwares that they are um, visually uh, nice, they have flowers, they have fishes, so patients like to play with those devices. And when it comes to electro-stimulation, now we are, uh, so I did a second master degree in Brazil to validate the first one, so yeah, because as I did in another country, I need to do it again. So uh, I start to study more electro-stimulation, but not for strength, uh, of skeletal muscles, but for his mouth muscles. So as uh, people uh, already do for uh, diabetic 
wounds, for example, so I studied uh, for erectile dysfunction. I read something about erectile dysfunction. I thought uh, I heard about your PhD. I thought, oh, she's going to do something with erectile dysfunction, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell us more about the subject of your PhD. Yeah, for sure. I was done with erectile dysfunction, so we had great results. But then I want to do my PhD focus in women's health and on my clinical practice because inside uh, my clinic we saw uh, a lot of women with painful bladder, and you know that's. We got very worried because we have um, a crisis in the world with the antibiotics. So we just had now a lecture here in ICS talk, talking about the microbiome and how it's important for the women's bladder because it's a very new knowledge about the urinary microbiome and how does it affect urinary incontinence and painful bladder. So we know that from 2005 to 2015, there was an increase of 65% of use of antibiotics. So it's changing the human microbiome. So the thing is that most of those patients that get to the clinic, they have a urinary exam that is negative. But even if it is negative, some of them still get antibiotics to treat their symptoms. It's very tricky because it looks like a urinary infection and sometimes they are not even tested to see if there is or not an infection. So that was my aim when I um, created my thesis for the PhD that was to try to help at least a part of those women that were taking antibiotics and they were not need to. And how far were you in your PhD? Yeah, so um, I'm kind of in the middle of the PhD, so the aim of the work is to validate a tool that the gynecologists and the urologists can uh, know that those symptoms of burn and pain are come from skeletal muscles. That is something that for them is difficult to do because they don't have they don't have this this uh, that's our area of knowledge. But we need to provide them tools for them to recognize what's going on with their patients so they can send to us for us to treat them. Because, you know, on clinical practice, sometimes like two, three times we see them and for sure with manual therapy is the best way to treat those patients and behavior therapy. So they already improve a lot for their symptoms. So. Uh, but the, the doctors, they do need to, to have this knowledge and to have tools to evaluate these and then they can send us these patients more easier than it is by now. And because this is really interesting, of course, do you have any idea when we can expect the results? <laughs> <laughs> so we believe that in one year we will be finished because it's a larger um, number of patients that we're gonna have to evaluate it and to build the two and to validate and revalidate so that's a lot of steps that it takes to validate a, a tool so but in one year we expect to be finished and present here in ICS Las Vegas. Oh wow <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be wonderful. Yeah. And you were doing something in ICS as well. Uh, the the Institute, the institute. Yeah. yes, it's, it's new, so yeah. that's why I couldn't find a word yeah, for it. Do you want to tell us something about the Institute? Yeah, for sure. Because I don't know very well. So the Institute, uh, so I'm the Institute Director of the School of Physiotherapy. So we have our PT committee, um, our PT committee that it aims to build um, the papers and to organize the PD forum and all that goes around. But the institute, the aim of the institute is to be an educational platform. 
so what we are doing we are taking all the good videos and lectures and state of art that we had from the last uh, congress so we are put them in categories so if uh, you want to learn more about e-technology on pelvic floor you can enter on the institute web, web page and will be a specific area of e-technology and you can see all the abstracts or good lectures that were about that and we are invite the members if they have nice videos that they record, uh, if they have a nice paper that they think that it has to be in the institute page, that it's very educational, so they can send to us and it pass through the SOAP process and they, th this video will be there and people will, will be able to learn from, from this material. Well, that's a great thing, that's connecting knowledge. Yeah. So, well, otherwise you have to look everywhere and people are busy, so it's nice if you do all the work and we just <laughs> press the buttons and get the information. That's true. Well, it's a very good initiative. Yeah. And about the future, do you have um, uh, some things you really want for the future? In the, in the area? Yeah, yeah so um, I believe we can outrun uh, from technology. In, even in the pelvic floor area. I think nothing will substitute our our powerful hands. No, nothing will never <laughs> substitute. But I think we have uh, new research is coming from electrical stimulation, basically. Uh, mainly, uh, we have new evidences that when we are doing electrical stimulation, we are not working just with skeletal muscles, but mainly for uh, small muscles or for recovery or for regeneration. So there is a lot of papers coming from uh, another perspective of the electrical stimulation that I think will change a bit our clinical practice. So uh, this one point that I think that the future will bring to us. Well, innovation is very yeah. important. We know what we know, but we always need to improve and learn. Yeah, that's and, true. And use it, of course. Um, do you have a specific book you particularly like and would like to recommend to the viewers? Yeah, there is one that I love. It, that is the overactive pelvic core. That's the so one that I... Yeah. So it... Um, so Melanie wrote a chapter and it's from... Um, it's from several authors. Yeah, it's from several authors, but the main authors now, I, 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 can't, I can't remember their name now. Yeah, the Overactivity Pelvic Floor. So it's a great book. Beth Shelley did a uh, chapter by chapter uh, audios class about this book that is very nice as well. It worked to to enter on Beth Shelley website and, and, and there is chapter to chapter classes about this book and it's worth, worth to, to read it. Thank you, I didn't even know the book existed, yeah. so <laughs> new information for me as well. Um, is there something else you would like to add, something I haven't forgotten or you would like to share with the viewers? So I want to thank you very much for your <laughs> invitation. I was like so honored that you thought to invite me to talk about my PhD and, and this networking that we are getting to know what is happening in Brazil, United States, Netherlands. So I think that's so important for us to get closer. I think as closer we are, um, as much as we help each other, the physiotherapy, physiotherapy will just grow and this initiative that you had is just amazing. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, Christiana. Thank you. Thank you.